right, so we spent about three, three and a half months in Bonaire and we did a lot of diving. So we wanted to put all of those, our favorite dive, our favorite diving footage all together into one video so you could see exactly maybe what you would see in Bonaire if you went to Bonaire. So um, enjoy. All the dives we did are along the west coast of the island and are between about 30 and 60 feet. Sometimes we went to 70, but it's basically a wall along the entire coast. They've also put markers at each of the sites and most of them are accessible from shore. One thing I regret about our diving in Bonaire is that we never dove the east coast. It was a uh, much more hectic on the east coast because that's the windward side of the island and without protection you get large seas and strong currents and we really didn't get too many calm days and and when there were calm days you kind of just wanted to sit around and enjoy it but i was really fortunate and and that Bonaire turned out to be the first place I got to really experiment with my new camera rig, uh, my underwater camera rig specifically, which is actually the same camera we use for everything above water also, but I got a, a naughty cam dive housing for my Sony a6600. And uh, most of the footage you see here was captured with that camera using a Sony 90 millimeter macro lens and uh, trust fire lighting. Uh, I've experimented a lot during the period of time we were in Bonaire with uh, different types of buoyancy and different configurations of the rig that we now lovingly call the Kraken. And it looks kind of crazy when it's all assembled and uh, it, it just uh, is a little menacing. Uh, we've, uh, or I've tried to reduce its footprint a little bit because it's really nice to be able to get in tight on things sometimes. And uh, the bigger the rig is, the harder it is to, to get in close and get some of the amazing shots that uh, you want to. As you see, the water in Bonaire is truly crystal clear. It's pretty much like a swimming pool almost every single day. There, there, There is days where the clarity of the water is a little muddied up, but I, I mean, <laughs> compared to other places I've dove, it's truly remarkable. The water temperature in Bonaire never really strays outside of 80 to 82 degrees. That was pretty much the temperature of the water the entire time we were there. Uh, I think it was pretty much 82 degrees dead on. Uh, if I looked at my dive uh, computer log, I, I think I think it was always 82 degrees. And, and that's the whole way down. There is no thermoclines. It's the same water temperature throughout the entire water column. So it was actually really, really comfortable diving. I don't wear much of a wetsuit. I wear a small vest, a sleeveless vest, and just regular uh, shorts, the same shorts I wear every day. I wear for diving. And uh, it really made for a really comfortable diving experience. That being said, Crystal tends to uh, get a little colder than I do, so she's usually wearing a full body wetsuit. And uh, she seems to do just fine with that. And uh, it's, it's better to maintain one wetsuit for all your diving because of the buoyancy aspect of things. Uh, you know, you gotta add weight if you're increasing the amount of uh, coverage you have or the thickness of your wetsuit because that increases the amount of float, of flotation in your, in your system. And buoyancy is a really interesting topic, uh, specifically as it applies to me. 
Uh, I am really not that experienced a diver. I, I mean, after Bonaire, I'm well past 100 dives now. But when we arrived in Bonaire, I was probably around the 60 to 70 dive mark. And I had never really worked on precision buoyancy. And it's absolutely critical for videography. I, as you see, most of my footage still has some bouncing in it. And I, I don't know that you could ever really get rid of that completely freehanding. A lot of the really good footage you see, uh, the high-end stuff from like Nat Geo, they, they use tripods or they use even larger rigs that are much more stable. Uh, and they can also do lots of fancy post-production stuff. The Hilma Hooker was our first real wreck dive. We have dove a couple of smaller wrecks, but nothing really substantial like the Hilma Hooker. The Hilma Hooker has an uh, interesting backstory with some uh, hearsay and interesting rumors. Uh, apparently, it had some engine problems off the coast of On Air, and it ended up getting towed in. And uh, it had been under surveillance for some time, and when they did an inspection of the vessel, they found a huge amount of marijuana. It was 12 and a half tons of marijuana, uh, supposedly. I'm sure it was probably more like 15, because, you know, they got to get their cut, right? But, uh, yeah, I mean, to put that in perspective, our boat weighs about the same amount. So... It was an entire SV2 short worth of marijuana. That's a lot of pot. So anyway, after they uh, found the uh, obscene amount of marijuana, and uh, they took the crew and put them in detention, I'm not really sure what happened to them, but uh, what ended up happening was the boat just sat there, and I... I think that as, as it goes like the, the locals started to get annoyed with the boat just sitting there and it was basically actively sinking so they had a bilge pump that was running non-stop on the thing and uh the story has it somebody uh probably went and shut that bilge pump off because there was another person on shore ready to take pictures as it sank so i semi penetrated the hooker i uh, <laughs> no, seriously though, I, I really did. It was only a semi-penetration because it, a full penetration is, is when you go into the boat and you can't see light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. This is how, how I understand it anyway. So, as it applies to wreck diving. Uh, so wreck diving is obviously a very technical trade and uh, doing a full penetration dive is... Definitely, you know, uh, more requiring of expertise. The Salt Pier is probably one of the most popular and well-known dives in Bonaire. And I would equate it to the St. Croix Pier on steroids. It's kind of just a really amazing place to see all kinds of macro life and the larger stuff as well. So it was really, really cool. Uh, really great dive, and uh, we managed to find a frogfish on this dive.
Carl's ended up being one of my personal favorite dives. It's out on Klein Island, which is just off the west side of Bonaire. A very small, unpopulated island. And this particular dive site featured a sheer vertical wall that I think probably went from about 30 feet down to right around the 80 foot mark, I would guess. And it was just a really cool feature to, to dive around. There's just something about the porcupine fish. They really come off as some kind of house pet to me. I don't, I don't know what it is, but they just seem so lovable. I really don't know how to describe it, but uh, yeah, it's like uh, the dog of the sea as far as I'm concerned. We didn't see a whole lot of turtles while we were in Bonaire. I think we only saw probably three or four. Uh, and the one we did see, the hawksbill here, was incredibly tame. He really was not concerned about our presence at all, and I was able to get remarkably close to him without him uh, showing him the slightest bit of fear, which was pretty cool. I honestly don't know how we're gonna do on our next dives in the next country because I think we're pretty much spoiled after being in Bonaire for so long. Welcome, welcome, <laughs> welcome to Sundowner of the Week. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had asked you guys if there's a drink that you wanted to see me make or something that you would do yourself for your Sundowner. We got a lot of good recipes that we're definitely gonna try. But one stood out and I had to Google it. It's called Texas Ranch Water. And uh, by the way, thank you, SV Tinker. Pull this out one, and it's basically like a poor man's margarita, <laughs> or I should say, lazy. <laughs> it's a uh, tequila, lime juice, and soda water. That's the gist of it. But we're gonna do it two short style. So first, 
the magic wine. We are using the good stuff today because I don't have anything else on board. <laughs> uh, I think normally the internet was saying to use white tequila, but we're gonna get fancy. Oh, I'm gonna cut the limes first. Lime juice. I'm gonna pour it in the cup first so I don't overdo it. Now we're gonna make our soda water. If any of you guys use the soda stream at home, I'm just wondering how many pumps? How many times do you push it to the CO2 in, the, in these kind of in this size water bottle? I'm curious. We've just been experimenting and not really following any kind of instructions, so let us know. The scissor. <laughs> One. Just kidding. It's probably good. Alright, and just to make it too short style, I'm going to add the orange scissor. This is a uh, how you make your your soda water or whatever water flavor. Talk about what it is, because I don't know if so, that. Do they even have that really in the U.S. like that? Because yeah, so if you guys do the soda stream at home, you probably have some kind of syrup. I know they make Coca-Cola syrup, but I don't know if they have other flavors. But in the uh, Netherlands Islands, they have all these different flavored syrups for drinks. So I'm gonna use the orange one. You just need a very little bit. From it. Don't need much. Now, I'm gonna shake, shake, shake. Oh man, you put the soda water in before you're shaking it? Fuck. <laughs> did I? You did. So we're just gonna blend, blend, blend. <laughs> we're gonna do a stir. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> yeah, you ruined it. <laughs> oh, that we avoided a giant mess. Let's see what we got here. It smells good. Okay. Off to a good start. A little bitter, a little too much lime in there, I think. I, I told her to hold back on that like third or fourth lime she threw in there. Alright, so how are you going to make it better? Make it too. Alright, so here I'll show you how I fix this. This is going to get remarried into the, oh, oh, that's all right. I'll do fine in there. I'm going to add tequila. Add the syrup. Whoa. Yeah, it needs it. I'm going to add a little bit of the citrus stuff to this one's, I don't know what that means, citron. Is it lime or orange or I don't know what the heck it is. Who knows? Let's see what it tastes like. It's the one I would think. It's just lemon. Mm -hmm. I think this will be good. I'm gonna try to shake it. I think I could hold it together. What? No soda? Oh, soda water after? Oh no! It's it didn't explode. No, but when you open it, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> Popped off a little bit, but not too bad. It's pretty doable. Uh, I want the ice in there. So. Touch of soda. Nice. Looks a little uh, frothy. That's good. That's really good, actually. It tastes like uh, it really tastes like a margarita. This That's is a good margarita.
trip on this baby. <laughs> like this video and you think she's adorable, please leave a comment, it helps us a lot. Don't hurt Sammy's feelings. Sammy really wants you to smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs>